Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, I think the title of today's video will be Antichrist is Here Right Now. Now, I first want you to know that um, I'm not referring to the Antichrist that people um, see as an individual coming in the future to rule the world. Uh, I, I'm, I'm referring to Antichrist in a different way, and I'm going to elaborate on that now. Uh, we're going to look at the occurrences of the word Antichrist in the scriptures. And it may be a surprise to you, but in the prophetic books of Daniel and Revelation, uh, we even though we uh, believe that uh, some of these uh, portions of scripture are referring to the Antichrist, um, the word Antichrist is not used in Daniel or the book of Revelation. Uh, I was actually surprised that it wasn't particularly in the book of Revelation, uh, even though most people believe that some of the portions of those books refer to this person. The only times we actually uh, see the words Antichrist in Scripture are four cases, and they were all written by the Apostle John in, in his epistles, First and Second John. So let's look at those so we can learn what Antichrist is. Uh, it says in First John chapter 2, uh, verse 18, it's warning us to beware of Antichrist. It says, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. So, uh, this was written at uh, near the end of the first century. So the Apostle John is saying, even at that time, there are many Antichrists already. And it's also Antichrist plural. So John is telling us that uh, in this case, he's, he's not talking about a single individual. He's talking about the fact that many people are against Christ. Now, anti is a prefix that means against. Uh, if you're against Christ in, in this respect, what does that mean? It means that uh, you are teaching that Jesus is not who he said he was. You're teaching that maybe Jesus was not a physical being. He was spirit being. That Jesus was uh, not uh, God manifest in flesh, but was just merely a prophet or a great moral teacher. Uh, so they're against the doctrines of the identity of Jesus, and they're against the doctrine of salvation through faith in Jesus. That uh, uh, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So these antichrists were and are teaching that uh, not only do they not agree who he is, but they do not agree that salvation comes through him alone and only through faith in him and not through religious works. So that's what we're going to look at as antichrists. Who are these antichrists that were existing back in the first century? And who are the antichrists that are existing today? Let's now look at 1 John 2.22. John writes, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist. So if we deny that the identity of Jesus, the finished work of Jesus for our salvation, then we would be labeled as Antichrist. Uh, let's look at, look at 1 John 4, verse 2 and 3. It says, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that is to come is coming, and now it is already in the world. So again, John is making the point here that um, there's a already a group of people, even the first century, 
who are against the, the, the true identity of Jesus and teaching that he was simply a spirit being. And, uh, and that, uh, so they're denying the identity of Jesus and, and John is saying that this antichrist that we've been talking about that's to come, he's already here. These are antichrists. Um, now we'll look at Second John 1, verse 7. For many deceivers have gone out into the world. Those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh, this is the deceiver and the antichrist. So, uh, the antichrist that John is describing are those people who are denying Jesus Christ, his identity and his, uh, as God, and his identity as Savior. So, he said that uh, there are many antichrists already in the world, even the first century. And there have been antichrists throughout history. Now, antichrist can be an individual who's against Jesus, who's teaching a false Jesus, a false message of salvation. Uh, and it could also be a, a system of teaching, a form of theology, uh, or, or even an organization that is against the identity and, and uh, of Jesus and the, the doctrine of salvation through faith alone and Christ alone. So it could be a person, a system, or organization. Let's look at some of the most common. Of course, there's a lot of people in the world today that are just uh, uh, what we on YouTube have uh, come to label as anti-theists. These are people who uh, have taken atheism a step further. And instead of just denying that God exists, uh, they actually spend a lot of time uh, fighting against uh, the idea of God and fighting against those who believe in God and especially the God of the Bible, especially Jesus Christ. It seems like anti-theists uh, want to spend most of their time arguing against Jesus. They certainly are anti-Christ. Uh, they're not an organized system, or uh, but there are others that are actually considered part of Christianity. Uh, many of the denominations of Protestantism, that many people think this is just another denomination or a sect of Christian, Christianity, and yet uh, they are antichrist because they are denying the saving power of Jesus. These are what we commonly call as the, the Lordshippers, the people who say faith alone and Christ alone, that's not enough, that's insufficient. Jesus' death on the cross, faith in that for your salvation, that's insufficient. Uh, there's more required. And then they give you a list of their requirements. You know, repenting of your sins, changing your life, uh, you know, the, getting water baptized. Uh, you know, well, the, the, the list varies, but they always add and say that faith in Jesus is not enough. So these people are antichrist because they're denying the sufficiency of Christ. And then, of course, we have, that's just a long list of, of uh, organizations and denominations that most people think are part of Christianity. Now, I'm going to take on one of the biggest, and this is the Roman Catholic religion. I've done an ex exhaustive study on uh, Roman Catholicism, so you can watch that for a lot more details. But uh, Roman Catholicism, or what I call Romanism, they uh, they are antichrist because they deny the saving ability of Jesus, the sufficiency of Jesus. Uh, they have misplaced their faith. Instead of relying completely on Jesus, they are putting their faith in their own ability to be religious, their own ability to uh, practice the tenets of Romanism. Uh, they've also... Uh, sharing their faith, not only in Jesus, but also in the Virgin Mary and also in the various popes. So they are uh, not putting their faith completely in Jesus. They're putting their faith in a religion, in popes, in Mary, and in their own ability to work their way to heaven through personal merit. 
So they are Antichrist, and there are approximately 1.2 billion Roman Catholics in the world today. So that is a large number of Antichrists. Now I'm going to, uh, I could mention a lot of smaller systems and organizations, say like Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and others, but I'm going to get to the biggest of all. The biggest Antichrist today, the biggest Antichrist of all history is Islam. Uh, they not only are the largest in number, there are approximately 1.6 billion Muslims today, but they are Antichrist in that they deny the identity of Jesus, the, 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 the deity of Christ. They say he's not God, he's just a prophet. In fact, in the Quran, it says uh, it's a lie that, she, that God has a son. He does not have a son. They deny even the death of Jesus. In the Quran, it says that, no, he, he did not die on a cross. It was, it was God tricked everybody. He, he, uh, someone else died on the cross, and not Jesus, and God just made everybody believe that it was Jesus on the cross. So they, in a way, they're actually saying God is a deceiver. So they are de uh, denying the deity of Christ. They're denying the death on the cross for our sins. And, and they deny the, 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 the gospel, the message that we're, we can be saved through faith in Jesus Christ. Through his death, burial, and resurrection, and through, his, through trusting him, we get salvation. They deny that. And they say that, no, salvation comes through personal merit. If you practice Islam well enough, then maybe you can go to heaven. And there's, so we got the largest group of, of Antichrist or Islam. Right behind that, we have Roman Catholicism. Then we have various sects of, of uh, Christendom uh, that, that put their faith in their, their own ability, not just Jesus, but also their ability to change their life and repent of their sins and make Jesus Lord and surrender their lives, those people. So Antichrist is alive today. And as the Apostle John said, even in the first century, yes, Antichrist not only is coming, but he's here today. And all these people, he referred to it as plural. So now you know about Antichrist. And there's only four times that word appears in the scripture. Isn't it interesting when we look at those four instances, uh, what we learn? All right. Uh, I'll be interested in hearing your comments. Bless you all. In the name of our great Savior God, his name is Jesus Christ.